Hi, and welcome to AEHelp.com's IELTS test preparation videos. Now you will see a native British English candidate from England score a band nine for his performance on this speaking interview. Native English speakers at times will take the IELTS exam for immigration, work, and for teaching positions in ESL schools. Now watch and learn. Welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. It has three parts. I will give you instructions for each and I'm going to record it for marking purposes. To begin, a few questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. What is your full name? Uh, my first name is Stephen. My surname is Andrews. Uh, but please just call me Steve. This is uh, short for Stephen. Okay, Steve. Uh, may I see your identification? Yes, of course. Here's my passport I used to, for registration. Thank you. Okay. Here's your passport back. Thank you. Where do you live? I live in Richmond, which is in southwest London. Uh, I live in a two-bedroom flat with my wife. What do you like about your home? Um, I like that it's really spacious and bright. We've got um, 12 foot high ceilings and southwest facing windows that really let in the light. Um, it's a really, really well built building as well, so um, it's really quiet and peaceful. Let's talk about ball games. What is the most popular ball game in your country? Well, that, that, that's an easy one for me. Um, it, it, it's football, without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, not only in England, uh, but across the whole of Great Britain. Um, we watch and play it religiously, literally every single weekend. Which is your favourite ball game? Uh, for me as well, it, it, it's definitely football. Um, I'm, I play five a side, 11 a side, I play it regularly. Um, just last weekend uh, we won 3-0 when I actually scored a goal, it was a really great game. Where can you play ball games in your area? Um, just literally two streets away from me, um, there's a football pitch, uh, we play football there. Also, probably about a five minute drive from where I live, there's a nice recreation centre. Um, you play indoor ball games there, I go there quite often, uh, play tennis and handball. I just want to take a moment before the rest of this lesson to tell you about an exciting opportunity to get band seven or higher in just three months with 100% cash back by learning and speaking English every day for 30 days with the Lingoda Sprint event. This is your opportunity to master the English language. Not only do you get the 100% cash back, but you can get a cash prize and access to Cambridge online practice tests for free. More than 25,000 people have participated in past Lingoda Sprint events and they have shared their positive experiences. For many of them, it has transformed their lives. I have been learning Spanish for the past couple months using Lingoda and I must say their materials and teachers are professional and effective. Usually there are only three students in each class, so I get lots of time to interact with the teachers and really practice my language skills. The next Lingoda Sprint event starts April 8th and goes until July 6th, 2020. Join the Super Sprint event, which is 30 days of English classes, one class each day for one hour. Attend all of your classes and at the end, you will get a full 100% refund. Or you can attend the sprint event, which goes for 30 days and you have to attend 15 classes. Again, one hour a day for at least 15 days. Attend all of these classes and you get a 50% refund at the end. In order to participate in this sprint event starting April 8th, you have to register by March 24th and pay a 49 euro deposit to secure your spot. But wait, Lingoda has been generous enough 
to give us a 10 euro discount. Use this code also found in the stream description during registration. After a successful completion of the Lingoda Sprint event, Lingoda will refund not only your tuition fee, but even your deposit. Of course, following the rules of the event. To learn more about the rules, you can visit Lingoda.com. Lingoda challenges have been running for more than two years, and it is a proven concept by thousands of students around the world who now speak second and third languages fluently. I encourage you to visit their Instagram profiles and read their success stories. Good luck on your next Lingoda Sprint event. Now, back to the rest of the interview and the lesson. Why do you think people like to play with a ball? Um, for me, I find ball games, they're, they're really exciting and fast paced. Uh, the dynamics of the ball, um, but it's really challenging and can be like mentally and physically. Also, because we play in groups, it's a really great way to socialize. So get to meet new friends and obviously catch up with old friends. Have you ever played any ball games that you are not good at? Well, yeah, there's, there's a couple of games I'm not very good at. Um, I'd say the one for me is definitely golf. Um, it's got a really, really steep learning curve and to even hit the ball, is, it can be quite difficult. Um, I actually did play last weekend with uh, some friends and um, it was a really awful game. I was terrible. Um, I mulliganed at least three times on every round and I literally lost at least half a dozen balls. That's the end of part one. Now we will continue with part two. For part two, here's a card with some questions. Don't turn that over yet. And here's some note paper and a pencil. You will have one minute to look at the questions on the card. Think about your answer. Take notes in the one minute if you wish. And then you will have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Are you ready to begin? Yes, please. Okay, turn over the card and uh, your one minute preparation time begins now. Okay, thank you. Steve, your one minute preparation time is up. Please okay. begin speaking. Okay, um, a, a few months ago, uh, probably around August time, I went to a, a festival at the uh, Windrush River. Um, and I've got to say, disappointingly, it's one of the most polluted places I've seen in quite a long time. Um, it's quite a big river and it runs um, northeast down into the Thames, feeds into the Thames at Oxford. Um, it goes through a lot of urban areas and forests. And there was a time when I was a child, I used to go fishing there quite often with my dad and granddad. But I couldn't imagine going fishing there now. It's, they're so polluted, I, I, I doubt there's any fish alive still in the water. And if they are, they've probably got three eyes. It's just, but all jokes aside, it, it's, it's, it was really, really sad to see um, all the wildlife's gone there, the plants are dead, the, the, there's like an odor coming from the river and the water was really brown and murky. It used to be so clear and full of life. Um, it's, it's just not good, so obviously it's, it's devastating to see the effect it's had on the animals, the, the plants, and it must also affect the uh, residents living in the area. Um, I couldn't imagine someone swimming in there. If you did, I, I imagine you would just come over in a real nasty skin rash. It's, it really is that polluted. Uh, there's a lot of sewage being pumped into it, and I can also see, like, you can just literally see bottles just floating down the river. I believe the people and the government, they need to come together and a water purification plant needs to be built um, to help with the overflow of the sewage and to clean up the mess and get the river back to the state it was in before. Okay, Steve, your uh, two minutes is up. I'm going to stop you there. Can you please pass back the uh, card, the note paper? Thank you. And the questions. And now we will continue with uh, part three. For part three, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Let's talk about pollution. What are the different types of pollution that can be commonly observed in society? I believe it's air, land and noise pollution, aside from the water pollution which I just talked about. Uh, which of these is the most harmful and why? I, I would say it's, it's, it has to be um, air pollution. Um, 
breathing is a vital part of our existence. That's what we need to survive. Um, obviously, smog makes it harder for us to breathe. Um, I've read stories on the internet and in the newspapers of um, cities where people are actually suffocating due to the smog. They literally can't breathe. Why has pollution become a much more serious concern these days than a couple of hundred years ago? Well, a couple of hundred years ago, the, the planet was a lot less populated. Um, with literally, there's people all over the globe now, and there's eight billion of us, I believe. Um, pollution nowadays is a lot more prevalent, and obviously there's more of us, so we're creating more pollution. How can the problem of pollution be stopped? It has to be a joint effort. People from all around the world, we have to, have to get together, because um, air and uh, water pollution, it moves region to region, so we have to get come up with a concept like the uh, Kyoto Accord and really work together to stop pollution. Some people say that we do not inherit the earth from our parents, but we borrow it from our children. Do you agree with this statement? Why or why not? I, I do. That's, that's a really, really good statement. I strongly agree with that. Um, basically, if we carry on the way we're going, there is going to be no nature for our children and our children's children to enjoy. We really have to stop the pollution come up with solutions and work together. Let's talk about saving the environment. What kinds of technology have been developed to help restore the health of the environment? Um, there's been lots, lots of great inventions over the last few years. Um, obviously with solar technology, I've also got uh, low energy, eco-friendly light bulbs, uh, electric cars for example. Which of these should be paid the most attention to for the betterment of the Earth? Uh, for me, I believe uh, solar, solar technology. Um, energy consumption is one of the biggest polluters we've got on the planet right now, so I believe we need to move more into solar energy um, developments and industries. How can people be encouraged further to recycle more and not just carelessly throw away their papers and plastic? Um, for me, it would be a, a, a two-prong approach. Um, the first one would be through education, um, showing people the con challenges and consequences and what happens if they don't recycle. This could be done through ed at school, uh, through media ads. Uh, another way is, um, we actually do this in the UK, is um, implementing fines for people who do not recycle. For example, if you put your cardboard rubbish in a normal rubbish bin rather than using the recycling bin. That is the end of part three that concludes the speaking portion of the exam. You will have your mark in about two weeks time with the other sections. Uh, remember to take your identification okay, with you. you and have a great rest of your day, Steve. Thank you very much. Thank have a good you. day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. So why does Steve get a perfect band nine for his performance on the speaking interview? Is it because he's a native English speaker? No, absolutely not. Is it because he's speaking perfect English? No, there is no such thing. What Stephen does well is to answer all of the questions accurately, completely, with clear, comprehensible communication. Again, remember, the IELTS examiners are looking for grammatical range and accuracy, fluency and coherence, lexical resource, and pronunciation. Now, clearly, because Steve is a native English speaker, his pronunciation is as good as it gets. Furthermore, he uses a wide range of grammar, from present perfect to passive, active voice, conditionals, to answer the questions. Whenever he makes mistakes, Stephen is quick to catch his mistakes and correct them. Mistakes happen, especially when candidates are nervous. Clearly, Steve is a bit nervous in some parts of this interview. However, this doesn't stop him from speaking fluently and clearly. Notice that for many of the questions in part one and part three, he doesn't just give the answer and explanation, but he also includes examples. For part two, he immediately starts with a very detailed and specific answer to the question. This is what you need to master 
in order to get those high band scores on your next IELTS exam. Good luck the next time you sit the test. To see many more speaking interview lessons like this one with other native English speaking candidates, as well as candidates from around the world, visit and join our premium package at aehelp.com. Also, download our app, Academic IELTS Help. Link the app to your web account for a truly world-class learning experience. Subscribe to our channel, click over here. Watch more videos, click right here. Or click our IELTS Hero for over 100 hours of complete video lessons and six original practice exams to help you pass IELTS.